I am Brenda Fintova for Biz News and joining me today is Dr. Steve Jinwaru. He's a recent PhD graduate from Stellenbosch University and his research suggests that there could be a significant amount of gold in mine dumps around Johannesburg. Hi Steve and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, could you share the main findings of your research with us, please? Yes. First, I would just like to give a bit of background with what mine tailings are. So the Witzwatersrand is one of the largest gold deposits that have ever been discovered. Um, uh, this was discovered in the 1800s, and they've been mining this for over a century. Um, they've mined about 53,000 tons of gold from this deposit. Um, and this has accumulated over 6 billion tons of mining waste from this. So what the Witzwatersrand gold, um, how it's extracted is using a traditional um, gold extraction process called cyanidation, using the chemical cyanide, which dissolves gold, which can then be recovered later. So the, this process has been happening for over a century and has accumulated these tailings dumps or these mine wastes in and around the Witzvatersrand mining region. However, now they have been trying to reprocess these mining uh, dumps and they're using the same methodology or the same method of cyanidation, uh, trying to dissolve the gold that is left over. However, they're getting a 30% um, recovery of this from these tailing stumps. So my job was to find out why there is 70% that is still not being recovered by cyanide. And what we discovered um, here at Stellenbosch University was that this gold is hosted within the mineral pyrite. Um, for layman's terms, that's fool's gold. Um, and it is hosted within this mineral as very, very tiny, you could say atomic gold um, within this mineral. And that uh, when it's hosted within this mineral, it's undissolvable by cyanide, henceforth the name invisible gold. Wow. So is there a method that, that it could potentially be extracted? Yes. So um, invisible gold um, within pyrite is nothing new. Um, our very own gold deposit in Barberton in Pumalanga has a substantial amount of invisible gold um, hosted within the minerals arsenopyrite and pyrite. And they use microbial extractions using bacteria to eat away at the mineral and then therefore liberating or getting this gold out. So there are many methods to get this gold out. However, having this gold in the Viswatasrand was severely lacking in the literature, hence why it, it wasn't implemented or it's not being done. Oh, so um, are mining companies coming to you or what, what, what is happening? <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of mining companies, uh, small scale and large companies have been uh, approaching me and be like, oh, this is a magnificent, uh, uh, good discovery. Um, is there profitability in this? Um, what was my methodology in doing this? And how beneficial will it be? Um, and I've been also approached by uh, international companies. Um, I got an email from one of the largest gold producers in China <laughs> the other day, which sent me an email saying, oh, good potential in this project. Yeah. Sure. So how much um, gold do you think there is? So in this mineral pyrite alone, there's over 420 tons of gold. That amounts to approximately 450 billion um, rands. So that's a substantial amount of gold. And just for context, the largest gold deposit that is being mined is the Nevada um, gold projects. And this has 320, so you can do a comparison. <laughs> it's a lot of gold. So uh, you, if companies are now interested in it, who does it belong to? So the uh, according to uh, a lot of the laws during that time in the, uh, the 1900s and going on to now into modern times, um, legislation had it that if you finish mining, the remains belong to government. So when I was doing my research, um, there's over 500 tailing stamps alone in the Johannesburg area. 
And a lot of these belong to the city of Joburg. So it belongs to government. Well, the government, city of Joburg, it has a it has a money problem. Could this help them? <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, if they if they award mining licenses and if there's proper legislation, um, and yeah, and investor potential, then yeah, it could um, help them a, a, a lot. Yeah. So, who should put this legislation into place? I mean, um, I think government should then. Uh, sort of get into this and put legislation in place. And um, when I talk about legislation, I also mean the ben- the benefits of the people because these tailing stumps um, are very proximal, are very close to major urban settlements, especially these high-density uh, urban settlements. And these contain a substantial amount of cobalt, copper, and uranium, as well as arsenic, um, and this has detrimental health issues to the people who are staying close to these tailing stumps. It was brought up in the meeting when I went to, I was a guest speaker for the Public Protector of South Africa. And this was brought up that there are some young students close to these tailing stumps, primary schools close to these tailing stumps, and they have um, sort of lung issues. Because of these tailing stumps, they have uranium in it. So... If we were to mine these properly or to get these away from the major settlements, this would be beneficial. So legislation should also focus on the environmental aspect and the, the aspect to helping people. Yeah. So, so do they also contaminate water? Yes. Um, Johannesburg right now has a very, very, very bad um, acid mine drainage problem right now. And acid mine drainage, uh, if I can just explain it, is is directly caused by this mineral pyrite, um, which has the gold in it. Pyrite, when it's exposed to oxygen and air and water, it starts to break down and it releases uh, sulfuric acid. And it also releases the heavy metals that are hosted within it. So if we mine this, we're directly recovering and stopping acid mine drainage at its tracks. Well, for for people who might not be able to visualize this, I mean, we from South Africa know about these mine dumps. We kind of drive past them and don't even think about them. You know, just describe a little bit, where are they and what do they look like? So they are these hills. Um, <laughs> when I was growing up, I thought they, these were natural features. If you grow, I grew up in the Johannesburg area. <laughs> so these are just hills of very, very fine sand. And these are dotted all across the city, all across. And it's not just in Johannesburg alone. There is uh, tailing stamps in the, in the town of Evander, Clagstor, Coltonville. They are all across this mining region. The Vizfatasrand is very vast. So even in the Valcom area, which is in Free State, they are tailing stumps. It's just these massive, about um, 10 to 20 meter tall, very fine grained uh, uh, sand dunes. So they look like sand dunes, basically. So, Steve, do you foresee an invisible gold rush? You know, because we already in South Africa, we are attracting, you know, these illegal miners from from the surrounding countries. Do you, do you think people, when this is known and people realize more what could be in there, that people would start coming to South Africa to try to mine there? So I just want to, yes, um, I'd just like to tell the difference between what is the tailing stumps and what the illegal miners, uh, i.e. the Zamazamas, are after. So what the Zamazamas are after are what is in the mine shafts, what is underground. So uh, a lot of mining companies have abandoned these mines because the, the gold deposit has matured, it's finished, but there is these leftover um very tiny pieces of gold that are still left over. That is what they are targeting. They are targeting native gold. Whereas in the tailings, it is very fine dust um, and it's within the mineral, uh, the mineral pyrite. So if it's called, uh, what we say in a metallurgical sense is that it is low grade, meaning the gold concentration is low, but high tonnage which means that in order to uh, get a substantial amount of gold, you need to process this 
at a very high tonnage. You need tons and tons of material for this. Whereas in, if an individual person was to do it, they wouldn't get any gold out because it's so low concentration but high tonnage. There's a lot of it within a low, the low concentration within a high amount of material. Um, sure. Okay, so so that's not what they're after because it's too small for them. So you need you need technology and you need kind of big money to be able to do that. Yes, yes, agreed. So, so with the amount of gold that you man would manage to extract if you're a company that's interested in doing this, would it be worthwhile? You know, what is it worth in terms of rand or dollar terms? So, right now, um, big companies like DRD Harmony and Pan African Gold are processing these um, tailings and getting 30% off and they're making a substantial amount of profit. Whereas in if you were to in place a pre-treatment to get this gold out of pyrite out, you would improve your recovery by approximately 60%, which is very much, it's 30% more. <laughs> or even you can get as much as 70 to 80% um, from this pyrite and with the gold price now you're talking of millions of rands which you can get profit from all you need is just um, uh, of course each tailing stem within each gold field is different um, but if you create a huge robust processing plant you would get a substantial amount of profit just by putting these at high tonnages, and you can get a lot of gold out. Very interesting. So what is your background? You've got a mining pedigree, don't you? Why this interest in, in, in gold mining? <laughs> so, yes, um, my grandfather, George Henry Nolan, was, is a very famous prospector. He's the one who discovered the Bikita pegmatites, which is the largest lithium deposit in Africa right now. Um, he discovered it within the 1930s, around that time. Um, yes, yeah, so I, they say in the articles, they say he has mining in his blood. <laughs> so, yeah, that also inspired me. So, yeah, so I have a geology background. Um, at, yeah, at Stellenbosch, I studied um, geology um, and then did my honors in geology. And then I did my master's in geometallurgy, which is a combination of chemical engineering and uh, geology and then that master's was upgraded to a phd so that is sort of my background <laughs> yeah so and what next for you what would you like to do after this i am a huge believer in sustainable mining um, i believe that mine waste is the future to of mining especially now we need it now more than ever because we've exhausted our high grade deposits this is evidence within the vits um a lot of the South Africa's gold production has been dropping since the 1960s. And I believe tailings are going to be an alternative um, resource for South Africa uh, in terms of gold. Um, and I also want to work with uh, mine waste from different deposits for the energy green transition. As you know, we are in an age where we are trying to decrease our carbon footprint and the only way to do this is using um, changing how we um, our electricity production, but this requires a substantial amount of metals. And um, I believe that tailings, as I said before, the Vitz has a lot of cobalt, copper, nickel. These are transitional metals that are required for the for green energy. So this can also be an opportunity to have sweetener metals getting gold out as well as acquiring these metals which are deleterious or bad for the environment but also good for um, the energy green transition and would you like to study it further or go and work in the mining industry stay to south africa move some of the other big um, um, you know countries like australia canada that also have these kind of mines um, yes, I'm, I'm a big fan of Africa, <laughs> very much a proud African, but I would love to um, venture off. Um, Europe, Canada, Australia have 
are very technologically advanced in terms of extraction of these metals and extraction in a metallurgical sense. So I would like to broaden my horizon in terms of knowledge. And if the opportunity presents itself, go overseas, acquire this knowledge and come back. And it's for the benefit of the African economy and the African people. Uh, thanks so much for speaking to us, Steve Chingwara. Thanks for speaking to us. Thank you so much for having me.